Finally, uh, we're going to run the time history analysis. Um, in this case, um, just to uh, clarify, so I had the analysis for gravity, the model, the pushover, uh, the model itself, the open seas, uh, these three files to run the analysis and the W section. So I am adding to the folder uh, the analysis time history, that is the, the analysis itself, uh, the file to, to put the model plus the analysis together. And finally, this file that is uh, the accelerogram that I will be using uh, for my structure. This accelerogram is simply a text file, as you can see here. Uh, it's just a series of values in a text file. So um, if I want to plot it, uh, I can just do it directly in Excel. So in this case, I'm not going to, to take into account the, the time step. It's um, 0.02 seconds. I'm just considering the steps here. So from zero to a little bit over 6,000 steps. Uh, there are three earthquakes here um, that I use for some other project and I'm going to be using in this one for uh, as an example. You can obviously um, use the earthquake that you require. Just as a comment, this earthquake is already in the correct units. So it's in uh, meter per square second, um, the acceleration which means that the, the PGA uh, here is nearly five meter per square second. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to open the analysis. This one is a little bit more complicated than the others. So again, all of this, my recorders are very similar to the ones in, in the pushover, except that in this one I am adding a couple numbers based on variables here in the name of the file because normally when you do the, the time history sometimes you want to run many different earthquakes so what I do is uh, by using either uh, the TCL software sorry language or another software like MATLAB you can change the values of, of, the, of the earthquake so you can read many different earthquakes and this is an identifier for the scale. In this case, it's going to be just set to one and one. It's not going to change anything in this specific example. So my recorder is again, uh, global behavior and local behavior, recording exactly the same than in the pushover. Uh, now in this one, I have to add a little bit more about the, the damping because I need the Rayleigh uh, damping coefficients. So I do certain calculations here based on first of all the the damping ratio i am considering three percent since it's a steel structure and for the second mode just for simplifying it i am also considering three percent this will also obviously depend on your structure um, the t1 and t2 are directly uh, obtained from the model analysis i just copy pasted them here and everything else is just uh, the typical formulations to get the uh, alpha and beta coefficients for the Rayleigh damping. Um, now I'm going to input the ground motion. Uh, lambda here in this case is a variable that will determine the scale of the ground motion. If I use lambda one, means that I will use the ground motion as it is. So my PGA is going to be around five meter per square second. Uh, the DT, that is the, the, the size of the steps is 0 0.02 seconds. Uh, and the number of steps in total that I will have is 6,047 uh, steps. And I'm going to store everything in a variable uh, that will be a string. And this string is uh, uh, contains the word series, dt, uh, file path. So I'm telling it where to read this ground motion and what will be the scale factor. As you can see, this is basically uh, a command for the TCL uh, within a string. I'm going to set uh, up the tolerance and the maximum number of iterations. Um, what kind of convergence te tests in this case? Uh, I'm going to define a load pattern. I am using number three here, although I could have used two because I'm never going to run the pushover and the time history immediately after. However, well, just to have it differently, I change it for three. In this case, the, the pattern is a uniform excitation. It's not just a uh, uh, linear load. Um, 
the direction of this excitation is one so it's going to be applied on the horizontal axis uh, you could change it to be in the vertical axis as well and and uh, I am indicating that the acceleration is going to be red from this file up here that is actually this variable that is assigned back here um, these values are pretty much constant they don't don't change uh, I am setting up here the alpha and beta values and finally um, well basically I'm going to finish setting up everything uh, I'm going to start my analysis um, I'm going to set the variable OK to 0 um, because when I analyze as you can see uh, in here uh, well, I'm going to analyze and the result from the analysis is going to be stored in the variable OK that will tell me uh, if it's a 0 then it means that it did run successfully if it's different than 0 it means that it failed so it didn't converge so I, I am putting this variable in order precisely to have uh, an output and to know if it ran successfully or if it didn't uh, now what I do here is uh, I determine what will be the final step uh, the final time sorry that will be basically the start time uh, plus uh, the number of steps multiplied by the the, the step size um, so this time is the initial time of my of my uh, analysis uh, now this uh, dt for the analysis is the time step that I'm going to use for the analysis that can be the same time step than, than in the ground motion however it's convenient to have a smaller uh, time step to avoid problems with convergence so basically uh, there will be an interpolation there will be 10 points of at each uh, time step of the ground motion uh, that will be interpolated from one point to another um, and I'm going to run the analysis how do I run it? I use a while cycle because I want to run it many times for each one of the steps so basically um, this while cycle um, is going to be running as long as uh, there is convergence on each step and as long as we haven't reached the final step um, so it's going to be analyzed at each step it's going to modify uh, the, the time and finally after it finishes it's going to just tell us if it ran or if it didn't run and then at the end uh, I'm just cleaning uh, everything so um, what I'm going to do again in this case is I'm going to the open sys um, I am going to use the command source and then run time history dot tcl and it's running now it's going to take a few seconds and when it finishes it's going to show me here the the recorder output um, Let's give it a couple seconds more. So it has finished now, and um, yep, it it ran successfully, which means that there was convergence. Um, and then here I can see the values uh, of, of my output. So, for example, in this case, if I want to see what was the story displacement. Uh, similar to the pushover I select this I go to Excel and I just simply paste the values and uh, as you can see now the steps they correspond to the time uh, so my time step of the ground motion was 0 0.2 seconds uh, sorry 0 0.02 seconds here is 0 0.002 uh, because we use only 
uh, I don't know if you remember, but we set it up to get, to get 0 0.1 of the ground motion time step. That's why we have more steps. And actually, if you check it, instead of having 6,000 and something steps, we have 60,000 steps. Uh, that's why it takes a little bit more to run. So if I select, uh, I don't know, this is first story, second story. If I select the second story, uh, I could easily, actually, let me take probably the first story first. So I'm going to insert This is the behavior of the first story. And then I could probably plot here on the same window uh, the behavior of the second story as well to I don't know, compare the maximum displacement at each story. So I will just drag this one that I cop once I have copy pasted, and you can see here um, this one, the blue one, corresponds to the second story. Actually, I can see that there's a permanent drift here of the order of one uh, to the minus ten uh, to the ten times ten to the minus one, uh, which means uh, like probably it would be like I don't know seven eight centimeters here at the end. Um, Whereas this one has also a permanent drift of um, four, yeah, more or less four centimeters. The maximum, the, the peak story displacement was on this side, uh, and it was equivalent to 23 centimeters. So it was a pretty strong earthquake for this building. And yep, you can do exactly the same with uh, the values for the elements or for uh, other nodes as well so this was it thank you very much for listening to the tutorial and please uh, download the model so you have you have it as a guide and then from there just modify it uh, open is very powerful and you will be able to uh, model a lot of different things. Thank you.